again thank the anonymous sponsor of this series of classes, Shisha Baruch and Atzlocha, and it's in honor of our campaign that we're having now. Um, anyone who wants to join it, and I'll daven for them personally at the coastal for 40 days straight, including Friday Shabbos, 40 days straight, or whoever they um, would like me to, for $85 a month, um, over the course of a year, $1,020 a sponsor, one of Reich Nankolo. Just write to me at dytravis, 613, D-Y-T-R-A-B-I-S, Travis, 613, at gmail.com. Again, we're talking about what the world will look like before Mashiach comes. And if you want to know, go to your window now, look out the window, and you'll see. The world that we're experiencing today is a reflection of how the world will look like before Mashiach. This is what my Rebbeim, the Gedoli Ador, Rav Moshe Sternbach, um, Rav Azriel Orbach, Rav Shlomo Safrani, um, and others have told me. There was one who did disagree. This was Mishal Fisher Zetzal. He said, absolutely nothing is different today than it was, so we have to be honest. But uh, my other Rebbeim have told me otherwise, especially Rav Moshe Sternbach. He said, we're so close to Mashiach, it's like one hair's breath away. Hashem is waiting for one thing to happen when Mashiach comes. I thought it was for sure the Machsam Lapi, which two righteous women set up for for uh, Tisha B'Av. Um, but unfortunately, it was only um, in the um, thousands and not in the hundred thousands. Had it been all of Kalei Yisrael, um, and they'd really taken it seriously, perhaps Mashiach would have come, Bezrat Hashem, um, in the future. In any event, we're talking about societal breakdown, what the world will look like before Mashiach comes, and the Mishnah gives a number of examples of this. And each one is noteworthy. I want to explain it. Yeah? Um, we're going backwards, really. Okay. Chachmas Sofrim Tisra. We spoke of the last class about how Torah honor will disappear. Uh, recently in Eretz Israel, um, right before Gershon Edelstein was passed away, um, the left in Eretz Israel made a demonstration, Panovich Yeshiva, and afterwards, they took their demonstration to the house of Rav Gershon Edelstein. I believe it was uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, around that time. And they woke the Rav up. The Rav was 100 years old. They woke him up, um, hackling him. Yeah. When uh, asked to apologize, they refused. And because of that, one of the le- leaders of this uh, protest against Rav Gershon was Angel's Bread, the person who made Angel's Bread. Because of that... Um, many people stopped eating angel's bread and um, Rev uh, Rev um, Rev Elaine uh, Shabbat the son-in-law of Yashif his name eludes me at this moment he said the only tshuva they could really do is to open up a koil they did write a letter of apology after he was uh, passed away but Kedalim said that it's not really enough Anybody who really feels for Gershon's honor should continue not buying angel bread because they did not really ex- express significant uh, regrets uh, for their for this that took, took place. Right. Okay. Um, in any event, so that's one thing. Chachmas so from Tisrach, it will be putrid. A day doesn't go by. Maybe we could say a week at most a month. If you listen to the radio in Israel, I prefer if I wouldn't, but I travel a lot in cars and the people who um, I drive with usually have the radio on. They feel it's very important to know what's going on, which there is something to that. And it's always about the Yeshiva Bachrim who are not serving the army. This is the greatest evil of society, etc. Yeah? Okay, I'm not getting now into political or other considerations, but just the way that Torah is being abused, it's sircha, kachma sofrem tisrach. It's considered some to be something which is putrid and disgusting. Now, do the people who are coming out against Torah know what it is? 
Recently, I was interviewed by Netflix. They did. They're doing a documentary about the religious and non-religious relations, strained relations in Israel, and they have no idea what Torah is. I brought them with the base medrash, our base medrash, to a hundred and and twenty-five of Rechem pumping away, and they just couldn't believe it. What was going on? They said, "This is Torah. Wow, we don't even. We never knew that there was such a concept as of Rechem sitting and learning from morning till night like this." Chachma so from Tisrach. Sircha means like it'll be putrid. And people who fear God will be, will be disgusting. Right? And the truth will be extremely hidden. Extremely, extremely hidden. Right? Whoever wants to know the truth, as Rav Chatzka Levenstein, will have to dig very, very deep. They'll have to take a one of these electric... Um, Machines that pound the ground, which they use here in Eretz Israel when they want to knock down a mountain to build an apartment building. Yeah, that's how you're gonna have to find the truth. It'll be very, very hidden. Emes Nederes, and this is what we're experiencing now. Emes Nederes, the truth is very, very hidden, and the only way you could find it is if, as Rav Levinstein says, if you dig very, very deep. You have to dig beyond the media and beyond. There are newspapers and the radios and television. Everything is going on, and see that the um, left-wing propaganda against Torah, against yeshivas, against Yiri Heiti Masu, the MST did Now we mentioned yesterday about Naren Pene's Kani Albino. Right? It's all the same. It's all one action. Right? Because all of these things really are one attribute. Societal breakdown. The honor that was afforded to Torah, to elders, the solely breaking down. I remember one time when I was serving as Mashkiach, Meshiva Hechel Torah. So um, there was somebody who was making a very significant disturbance in Yeshiva, and I asked him to leave the base Medrash, right? Um, so he started to wrestle with me. Um, he didn't know that I'm how stubborn I am. So I fought back a little bit. Anyway, so he called the police. The police came and um, wanted to arrest me. And eventually it was a big... Uh, I, I took his phone away, I think. So um, he called the police. And um, so... And it was quite... Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a little bit, uh, what do you call it, touch and go. In any event, when Rav Sikoshlewski came down, like, and the police woman was, you know, seems like she was in fought in the Golan, she Golani, so suddenly she just melted. She realized Kavita Tera, and she respected it, and she accepted that she should, I should not be arrested, that I have the right as a Mashkech Yeshiva to take away somebody's phone if they are using it for the wrong purposes and causing a disturbance. But that was maybe five years ago, maybe a little bit less. The world has changed. I'm not sure if that situation will recur. Right? The, 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 the recognition of Torah honor, of the honor of elders, is getting weaker every day. And if you go out in the streets and you look out your window, you'll see that this is what's happening. And during this breakdown, it's incumbent on us to hold on to Torah principles, hold on to that honor, the honor of Torah and the honor of elders and the honor of people and not to be pulled by the tide and to get sucked into this vortex of confusion and of degradation and destruction of honor. Right. Um, the Mishnah continues, Zechenim Yamdu Pnei Karan, we said, um, and we'll speak about the last ones because it's a sheer amongst us. Israel Hashem. Again, if you'd like me to dive into 40 days of the Kosal, um, $85 a month, please, or you could dive into the Kosal, whatever you want. We'll gladly uh, take your contributions. And, um, uh, but for Kotel, davening $85 a month for the course of a year, please write to me at dychavis613 at gmail.com. And you should all have bracha, slacha, and hold on tight during these days as the chaos and confusion gets stronger and stronger. Amen, Kane Terrorism.